There's one more topic in this chapter on reacting mixtures and combustion, and it's CO2 emission. And why? It's relevant to today. Uh, CO2 emission was not a big deal when I was a student uh, uh, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, definitely wasn't a big deal 60 years ago. But in the next, right now it is already a big deal, and in the next 20 years it's going to even be a bigger deal. All right, for every kilogram of gasoline burned in an automobile, estimate the amount of CO2 produced. So it's like a machine here, I put in one kilogram of gas. Uh, what do I get out in the form only of how many kilograms of CO2? Do I get out 0 0.3, 3, 30, 300, or 3,000? Well, let's not guess. Let's do the calculation. So we have right here, you're going to have to have what is gasoline represented. How would you get, represent gasoline at a molecular level? It's a hydrocarbon. What's the ratio of carbon and hydrogen in, in it? What's gasoline? Octane. So octane is C8H18. All right, we're going to get some oxygen from the air, and it's going to produce some CO2. It's going to produce some water and all that. But let's just do this. If I have one of the fuel, how many CO2s do I produce? Eight. So I have to get that stoichiometric coefficients. You can finish balancing the equation, but we have enough information right now. One kilomole of fuel produces eight kilomoles of ox, uh, carbon dioxide. Okay, now this. I need to get the molar mass of my C8H18. All right. Somebody says I need my appendix. But you really can do a pretty good job without the appendix, can't you? So for every carbon, there's eight of them. For every carbon, isn't that 12? Isn't that 96 just from the carbons? And for every hydrogen which there's uh, 18 of them, isn't there one AMU, atomic mass unit? And so then you have the 18, add this, you get a four, one, one, four. You look it up, you're gonna find it's pretty close to 114. What is that? That's 114 kilograms per kilomole of the fuel. So I could say that for every 114 kilograms of my octane, I'm going to get eight kilomoles of carbon dioxide. You see that? Okay, but I, I need to come get it to kilograms of carbon dioxide. So what's the molar mass of carbon dioxide? For every carbon, it's a 12. For every oxygen, it's a 16, and I have two of them. Take a look at that. 44. That's the molar mass. Notice I tried to draw this as 16 and 16. The majority of CO2, the weight of CO2 is due to, not the carbon, the oxygen. It's heavy in the oxygen, isn't it? So if I said, well, I want to convert 114 kilograms of octane, I'll get 8 kilomoles of the CO2, but how many kilograms is that equal to? 8 times 44. If you have a calculator, I'll pull mine out too. So we have 8 times 44. 352 kilograms of the carbon dioxide. So if I have 114 of the octane gives me 352 of the CO2, then 1 kilogram of the fuel octane of gasoline gives me 352 divided by 114 kilograms of CO2. So we have, it's about, what is it again? 3.09 kilograms of CO2. So best answer is B. We're putting in one kilogram of fuel and we're getting out the tailpipe three kilograms of carbon dioxide. All right? Okay. We buy gas in gallons, and one gallon is about 3.8 liter, 3.78 liter. And uh, we want to burn that. Estimate the amount of CO2 produced if I burn one gallon 
of gasoline. Okay, one gallon of gas lead, uh, am I going to produce how many kilograms of carbon dioxide? Well, we have to go get some data. So I have to say that the 3.78 liters, I multiply that by the, the, uh, the density of the gasoline, right? And the density of water, I remember, that's one kilogram per liter. Isn't that uh, something easy to remember? Water's density, is that one kilogram per liter? Remember our water bottle? You got a water bottle, you drink a water bottle of half a liter, that's half a kilogram. A one whole liter water bottle, that's one kilogram. Okay, and then we multiply by SG times the density of water. What's this? Then the specific gravity of gas. It's not denser than gasoline, it's lighter, so it has a lower specific gravity. So you could look up for gasoline put in the vehicles, the specific gravity, and it's around 0.74, right? So you 0.739, that's our specific gravity. And so 3.78 liters, cancel the liters, of a, a gallon of gas has how many kilograms of gasoline? 2.8. Two point seven nine kilograms of the octane. Okay. So for every kilogram of octane, we just worked out that you get how many kilograms of CO2? We just did that. It was this number, three point oh nine. So let's multiply that by three point oh nine. It looks like you will get eight. 0.63 kilograms of the carbon dioxide. From what? From every gallon of gasoline that's combusted. So you're going to get around nine. Let's round it off to nine kilograms of CO2. Make sense? All right. Notice you can go out and take a look, uh, websites where they're worried about greenhouse gases, EPA, and they're saying from a gallon of gas, we get about 8,000 grams. How many kilograms is that? 8,887 grams. How many kilograms is that? About 8.9 kilogram, isn't it? What did we just calculate? 8.63. We're, we're, we're there. We're in the ballpark. Okay, that's, that gives us a warm, fuzzy feeling. So if you want to round this off, you'd say uh, nine, uh, every gallon of gasoline gives us nine kilograms of CO2 emitted out the tailpipe into the atmosphere. Diesel, a little bit more. Okay. This is where it becomes very uh, subjective. Your driving is different than another person's driving, different vehicles, different miles. But uh, this one, you know, engineers shouldn't be afraid of making some assumptions. So let's try and make an assumption. Say, what is the no average number of miles driven by an automobile or average automobile in the United States? B. That's good. I think you're right. I think most of us are probably a little under that, probably in the 12 to 15 to 18,000 miles per year. Some of you are way over that. You are doing a lot of driving, okay? Okay. Uh, some students will say, oh, I think it's around two. Look, it. my car is a 1992, and I'm getting close to 300,000 miles on it. <laughs> it's not. You, nobody puts on 2 million miles a year, right, in an automobile. But these are numbers that you start to work with, and they start to make sense. Okay. Now, what is the average fuel economy for an automobile? Some of you I know are driving stuff that gets 10 miles per gallon. I've driven it too. Some of you are driving stuff that's up near 40. I think very, very few are up in the 50s. A lot of us are in the 30s and a lot of us are in the 20s. This is a judgment call. What do you say? 30? 20? The average vehicle. I look around, I see a whole lot of SUVs. 
and pickup trucks. I think it's probably a lot closer to 20, and the smaller, higher economy cars are kind of getting blown off the road. Uh, but you're right, I think 30 for a lot of us. My vehicle's right at 30. Depends where you are. Yeah, absolutely. So now, what is the annual gas leak consumption for the average automobile? Well, if you pick that you're going to drive 20,000 miles and you're getting 20 miles per gallon, this falls out. This is a calculation. So, so when they do the calculation, raise your hand and, uh, and call on you to give me the answer. Yes, sir. So you're saying that 1,000 gallons... That's right. We just now know that we have a thousand gallons of gasoline the average vehicle consumes, and we just made this hard calculation that it puts out about nine kilograms of carbon dioxide per gallon. So guess what? Your vehicle, your average driving, blah blah blah, is putting out into the atmosphere. Estimate. What is it? thousand gallons at nine kilograms of carbon dioxide per gallon aren't you putting out nine thousand kilograms yeah that's quite a bit you could go check look at they said uh, it's about five metric tons so five thousand uh, pounds or not pounds kilograms uh, but they have 21.6 mpg and fewer miles we, we just said, okay, we're at 20 MPG, and we're at uh, 20,000 miles. So we're probably Texas compared to the rest of the, the country where they're driving less. But, hey, this is not bad. We're in the ballpark, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Okay, how about our electricity? So we just calculated that you're putting out, due to your driving, about 9,000 kilograms of the carbon dioxide every year. We're not tracing where it goes, how long it stays up there in the atmosphere. We're just saying that's what's put out due to your transportation. Now let's do it for a uh, house. So you say, mm, how much electricity does my house use per year? Well, they measure electricity in kilowatt hour, don't they? KWH? Okay. Basically, people don't know how many kilowatt hours they used, but they probably say, this is my average monthly bill. I know that it's low in some months and high in some months, but what do you use average? Do you know roughly in your apartment or your house? Is 150 a little high? Is 150 a little low? Maybe a little high, maybe. But I'll tell you, some summer months come along and boom, here's your electric bill. Or just a few uh, winter months, they had high electric consumption. Did you see your electric bill for like January and December? Those could have been pretty high if you had electric heating in your house. Bundle up and save it. Yeah, you're like me. Put a sweater on. <laughs> so anyway... If I said that uh, I pay roughly $150 a month, there's 12 months a year, I pay about eh, $1,800 just for electricity. Okay, I get it for about 10 cents a kilowatt hour. That's about what we pay. It fluctuates. You go to Houston, it's a little more. You go to the Valley, it's a little more. You go out of the state, and it's definitely more in other states. We're really low here. 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Hence, we basically use about 18,000 kilowatt hours of energy. Okay, that was uh, generated by coal and nuclear and natural gas. But let's say it's all generated at a nuclear plant, uh, not a nuclear plant, a coal-fired plant. If it's a coal-fired plant, basically, this is how much energy I get out in the form of electricity. I have to put in energy in the form of coal, burning coal, and I have a conversion factor efficiency to get the 18,000 out. Well, what is my efficiency for a power plant? You could say it's not less than 30%, but it sure probably is not greater than 40%, 35%, just 
you got to pick a number. You got to you got to work the math, right? It's not 10%. It's definitely not that. It's not 20%. No, they're better than that. We're talking about a modern coal-fired plant in operation. It's about 35, probably a little higher. But let's just run with 35%. That means I need to get this many kilowatt hours of coal, which converts to that many kilojoules of coal heat release out of in the fireball in that power plant. Well, when I burn coal, what am I burning? Carbon, that's what it is. So I'm just taking carbon in a solid form, put some oxygen with it, and get the CO2. For every kilogram of burned carbon solid, let's approximate that is what coal is, I'm going to get 33,000. That's out of our textbook. So you can say, you know what? I have to consume 5.6 metric tons or 5,650 kilograms of the carbon solid that's my approximation for coal so basically that's a lot of coal let's do this we'll have a little experiment we'll get a big pile of coal dumped in the parking lot we'll get some shovels we'll get some wheelbarrows and we'll just ask you to go out there and move that amount of coal from one pile to another pile Will you be able to do it in one wheelbarrow trip? No, you're going to take a number of wheelbarrow trips. That's a lot of coal that you're burning or responsible for burning by using electricity. That's your carbon footprint. See? All right. So now that we got that you're consuming about 6,000 metric tons, well, guess what? One kilomole of the carbon goes to one kilomole of the CO2 the ratio of molar masses kicks in. We get 44 kilograms of the CO2 per 12 kilograms of the carbon, don't we? So that's an additional multiplier. 44 divided by 12 times the 5,650. So this is how many uh, emissions that you're producing. So what did I just say it was? There's a molar mass of carbon, the molar mass of the carbon dioxide we already know. This is how much coal. So you're going to put uh, the 5650 oh, times the 44 divided by the 12. And then what does that kick out to be? 20,000 kilograms. That's a lot, isn't it? So... If you take a look, I would. we just estimated that we're responsible for 6 metric tons due to driving per year. 20 metric tons if you all of your electricity was from uh, coal-fired plants. Now, uh, the majority is from coal-fired plants, the CPS base. Growing percent is from wind, zero carbon emission. High percent from the nuclear is very high percent actually I forget the percent but it's probably around 30 percent uh, which is pretty much zero carbon emission in a nuclear power plant and then the uh, burning natural gas has a lower co2 emission but it doesn't go to zero it's clean quote unquote but it's not zero Does that make sense all right so hopefully you can do some carbon emission calculations